Hello everybody and welcome to our second exercise uh, where we're doing a randomized block design. So in uh, the first video of this module I've already gone through and I already talked about uh, some of the differences between the completely randomized ANOVA and these randomized block ANOVAs. And again it's very very similar to the difference between the two independent random samples that we looked at in module 10 and then when we transitioned into the match sample design and we were accounting for that different source of variation or that other source of variation. And so that's really what we're doing here as well. We're taking, you know, again, the total variation that exists in this data set. We're accounting for any differences across treatments. So here are those treatments. Do we have evidence to show that there's a statistically significant difference across those treatments? In order to refine our estimate of sigma, that random variation in the data set, we're accounting for this other source of variation that is sum of squares due to blocks. And that is a variation that exists due to the fact that our experimental units here are different. And so we're accounting for that source of, of variation to account for, we call it heterogeneity, differences between our blocks, between our experimental units. And then of course, whatever's left is SSE. Now, again, as I mentioned in the previous video, the calculation for SSE requires matrix algebra, which is not a prerequisite for the course that I teach. And so I don't have students calculating SSE from the raw data, which means I either provide SST or SSE, and you can see here, I've done just that, there's SST. So if I give you SST, we can calculate SSTR and SSBL, and then we have three out of the four parts of this calculation, we can acquire the fourth, which is SSE. So let's jump into this exercise. Let's produce our ANOVA table where here we are going to have, again, treatments, blocks, error, and total. We have sums of squares, degrees of freedom, mean square, F, P, F critical. And as always, we will begin in the top left corner, sums of squares treatments. Now, in the first video, I forgot to write the null and alternative hypotheses until the very end. So here, let's not make that same mistake. Here I'll have my null and alternative. Let's see what we're testing. Canine Munchies is developing a new brand of dog food designed to specifically for less active dogs. This is kind of funny because you can't see, but my dog is just sleeping on the floor just in front of me over here. Maybe she'll make an appearance in a video at some point, but she's pretty sleepy too. They've developed two types of food, all with a lower fat, higher protein blend of ingredients in order to minimize weight gain, a common problem among its target market of inactive dogs. In order to determine if there is a difference between the two new brands of food as compared to other uh, the dog's other regular diet, a group of five dogs were each fed the three types of food over a period of 30 days. Two of the three were the new brands, the third was the original diet. So here's our data. This is the difference in the dog's weight between the first and the 30th day on the diet. Positive numbers of weight gain, negative is a weight loss. Okay, so we have their original diet, and then we have these two other different types of diet that are supposed to be higher protein, lower fat diets. And these are looking at the difference between this, their weight at the start of the diet and of course their weight um, at the end of the 30 day period. So let's get into this. We have all of our treatment means are given. We have our block means are given and here's our grand mean. You bet you may not always be given all of these means and you might have to calculate all of them, but you know how to calculate means, so I'm not gonna spend time doing that here. 
But don't expect always that the problems that you have on an exam or an assignment will always have those means given to you. You might have to get those yourself. So here we have SST is given to us 2262. Let's get our SSTR. So SSTR, here we're looking at those treatment means, their difference from the grand mean squared. We're going to add those up and multiply by the number of observations in each, which here is B for blocks. So let's get going our number of blocks here. Again, we have five. Our first mean, negative 0.86 minus that block, uh, that grand mean, negative 35. And the next one, negative 0.9. And the next one here is a 0.72. Okay, so we can go through and calculate all of those. 0.86 plus, no, not plus, minus 0.35. Plus 0.9 minus 0.35 plus 0.72 minus 0.35 negative times 5 is 854. 854 is SSTR, degrees of freedom, same as always, K minus 1, so that's 3 minus 1, so I have 2 degrees of freedom, mean square, dividing that by 2, 427. Good, now we do the same thing for blocks, a little bit longer of a calculation, but essentially the same thing. <clears throat> so a number of blocks I have, a number of treatments, I have three treatments, and let's go through these calculations, going through these five blocks. Negative 93, negative 0.5, Negative third, one point two three, and finally one point two, negative one point two. Oops. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and calculate all of these differences. You're welcome to fast forward this part. I think I probably would if I were you. Minus 0.93 is a negative. Minus 0.35. That's a negative. Squared plus 0.5 negative minus 0.35 squared plus 0.33 minus 0.35 squared plus 1.23 minus 0.35 finally 1.2 negative 
minus 0.35, negative, close that, square that, equals, multiply by 3, and I have 10.74. I'll round that to 10.74. Block degrees of freedom, B minus 1. So once again, five observations. So 5 minus 1, I have 4. 10.74 divided by 4 is 269. Now, calculating SST, 2262 minus 1074 minus 854. That gives me my error of 3.34. Degrees of freedom, K minus 1 times B minus 1. So that's just the product of what's above. Here I have 8. Here, NT minus 1. Again, I have 14. Because here I have three treatments, each with five observations. 15 minus 1 is 14. You know what I just noticed? Wow. I started. I started writing my null and alternative. And then I got distracted. Mu1 equals mu2 equals mu, let's call it original. The alternative. Not all are equal. I'm getting sloppy here. Good. So let's move on. We're almost finished. I just need my mean squared error and then we can get into finally getting our test statistic and finishing up our test. 334 divided by 8. This gives me 0.42. That F statistic, MSTR over MSE, 427 divided by 0.42, 10 10.17. I have a F distribution here with 2 and 8 degrees of freedom. Alpha will assume 0.05. Everybody remembers what alpha stands for. We haven't really talked about it since module 9. Remember, that's my level of comfort in committing a type 1 error. A type 1 error here would mean I believe that one of these treatments, one of these samples is different when in fact they're not. So don't forget those basics going back to the earlier modules that we've done in workbook two here. So let's go down to our F tables. Two and eight degrees of freedom. Here's two and eight. There's my numbers of interest. Here's that critical value, 4.46. So I can already see here, there's my critical value, right? There's my reject and my do not reject. And look at that test statistic, it's way out here somewhere. So based on the critical value approach, we already have a pretty good idea of what we're going to do. And here I can see my test statistic, it's larger than the largest, right? I have 8.65 corresponds to a probability of 0.01. So that means that my p-value is less than 0.01. Everything here, rejection, uh, the p-value and the critical value, reject. I do have pretty strong evidence here to show that there is at least one of these samples is statistically different from the others. Looking at those samples, I could probably take a pretty good guess. 
If we wanted to know for sure, we can go through and perform a Fisher's LSD, just like we did in the completely randomized ANOVA. I'm not going to do it here. We've already gone through a few examples of that. The process is the same. So that's it. We have our second randomized block ANOVA. We have strong evidence here to reject which means we do have evidence to show that at least one of these diets, one of these types of dog food, does result in a statistically significant difference in the dog's weight. Okay, thank you all for watching, everybody. Hope this was helpful. Bye-bye.